All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. First off, I'd just like to say, uh, especially to uh, uh, Brother Matt and Sister Claire, that we're so sorry we weren't able to have y'all physically in service with us, but we are glad you're here. And then Sister Amanda McClanahan from Houston's, she's she's uh, here this weekend, so we want to tell her the same thing. Um, and then uh, there, there's others. I know the Brother Caleb and Sister Hannah are out of town this weekend. I think uh, the McGowans couldn't be in church this weekend. And and then the Painter family, I mean, I'm sorry, not the Painter, but the Fisher family, they, they've got COVID in their family. So we sure want to keep them in our prayers. And, and um, then Ethan Boyd has got COVID. And um, then there, has, there are several others that were exposed to all these people, the map. And Reva Durham family, the Jacob and Terry Durham family, the Ratliffs, the, the Yorks, <clears throat> uh, Brother Fisher's mother and father. And it is possible that since the Fishers came down with COVID, that they actually may have been, uh, they may have had and being actually in a place where they could have exposed others Wednesday night. So normally you'll come down with it within three or four days after you've been exposed to it. And one to two days after you've been exposed, you're contagious. So that's why I canceled today. I'm hoping nobody else comes down with it, but if they don't, I'm still, I think it was the right thing to do just to be careful because it does seem like it's on the rise right now. Um, anyway, so that's that. At least we can at least we can have a Zoom meeting, huh? Amen. Uh, and on these Zoom meetings, um, you know what I'm trying to do uh, here in the latter part of my ministry is make sure that the church has gone that we've gone over most of the general established doctrines and even any adjustments that I feel needs to be made. I always try to keep you saints abreast of anything that I'm changing or making an adjustment on from what's been taught, um, you know, in the past by, by the brethren. We're still working on it. We're still working on uh, establishing the truth. We're still, we're still a thrashing floor working in the body of Christ. So, so um, uh, I try to say things that I think we're well established on. You can take your notes in ink on the things that we're working on. You, you might already put it in pencil. Uh, anyway, so today I'm wanting to talk to you on the second chapter of Daniel. Um, this is a uh, teaching the body has had for many years, but a lot of times you don't ever hear a minister go over it. I've been over it in the past year or two, I know, but <clears throat> uh, there may, you know, like I was telling Sister Smith today, I was telling her what I was going to talk on. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to talk on until about 30 minutes ago. Finally decided what I felt to talk on. And I was telling her, and she said, well, I already know that. You, you told me about it. I said, tell me then. Explain it to me. And she said she didn't have time or something like that. <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to help you to make sure you've got it today. Anyway, so let's turn to the second chapter of Daniel's. I'll put it on my screen share so y'all can see it there. Uh, we'll open it up here like this. 
and maybe I can move. How did I do that before? I know how I did it. Can y'all see this little picture of Brother Paul and Brother Tally and the painters? Y'all see that on the screen? Do y'all see any picture of, of, of the Zoom meeting? I see it, Brother Smith. Okay. I didn't know if it would show that part or not. So anyway, okay, so here we are in the in the second chapter of Daniel. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of go over and explain the first nine verses. And um, then after that, we'll read some, or actually the rest of the chapter. But the first nine verse, verses, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And so he goes to his magicians and, and uh, wise men in the kingdom, and he says, yeah, I want y'all to interpret my dream. And they said, well, tell us the dream and we'll interpret it for you. And he says, I can't remember the dream. So he said, you tell me the dream and the interpretation. That way I'll know that y'all are really getting it from the gods. And, and um, they said, well, no, we, we need you to tell us the, the dream and then we'll interpret it. And he says, uh, no, I know what y'all will do. Uh, y'all that'll buy you more time and and uh, then you'll come up with an answer but I know if y'all can tell me the dream that you'll surely have the interpretation verse 10 here says the Chaldeans answered before the king and said there's not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter therefore there is no king lord nor ruler there as such things as any magician or astrologer or Chaldean and it's a rare thing that the king requires. There is none other that, that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to, to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth from the wise men that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain because Daniel and Meshach, Shadrach, and the Begindi, uh, Bendigo, that was Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, um, the, the, the three Hebrew children, they were considered wise men in Babylon among the Judah, uh, captives of Judah. And uh, Daniel answered the with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the chief king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. And he answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king there? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known Diana, Michelle, and Azariah's companions. That was Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. You know, the king had changed their names. That they would desire mercies of God, of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his and he changeth the times, the seasons, he removeth kings and setteth up kings. There's where we get that verse that God sets up kings and tears them down, removes kings and sets them up. He's in charge of every nation. God's controlling everything. And he gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that knoweth understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. 
Therefore, Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, destroy not the wise men of Babylon, bring me in before the king, and I'll show him, show unto the king the interpretation. And Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, that's what he called him, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king hath demanded cannot wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God. He's just saying they can't. But there's a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and makes known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came un, into thy mind upon the bed, what should come to pass herein, and he that revealeth secrets make known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, the secrets not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. I will say right here that, you know, God showed this to King Nebuchadnezzar, but he reveals it by Daniel to him, and it's written in the book of Daniel, and it's put there really for the history of the people of God. It's a foretelling and a testimony that God reveals what he's going to do in the future to his people. As Amos said in the sixth chapter, uh, when he said, God doeth nothing except first he showeth it to his prophets. So somebody can look up that exact scripture for me if you want to and give it to us here in a minute. Matter of fact, I wouldn't mind putting it right here as a note. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. The great king, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee and the form thereof was terrible. And his head was of fine gold, and his breast and his arms of silver, and his belly and his thighs of brass, and his legs of iron, and his feet part of iron and clay. You know, in most of our churches, we have had, if we don't have already a picture, but y'all, many of y'all, and most all of you, I'd say, have seen it, a picture of the, uh, our painting of the man image here in Second Daniel that has a head of gold, um, his breast uh, and arms of silver, the belly and thighs of brass and the legs of iron and feet of part iron and part clay. Um, because this has been our teaching of ours, this revealing here uh, of these, these dragon powers or kingdoms, seven heads of the dragon. Here in Daniel 2, it only starts with Babylon because that's who that's the dragon power that's in that's in place during the time of Daniel. Egypt and Assyria has already passed off the scene. Um, <clears throat> but we can look in, in Revelation 17 and uh, include that along with this second chapter of Daniel to get a little bit more understanding about it. Verse 34 here says, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut without hands, which smote the image upon the feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. This stone, of course, is, it's the body of Christ and it will eventually fill up a whole earth. Let's read, it says, then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broke to pieces together 
and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. That's just a picture there that the body of Christ is that stone that was brought out of a mountain of religion without hands. God did this. And this little stone, it keeps it, it actually destroys the image of the beast in the end of the Gentile world in the restored church that finally ends the dragon, the operation or uh, uh, the, uh, well, the, the, the dragon system, uh, which is the beast. And, and finally the beast and false prophet is destroyed. And then down through the thousand years, it'll take a thousand more years after that, before God, this little stone will finally fill up the whole earth with the righteousness of God's people. He said, this is the dream, and we'll tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art the king of kings, for the Lord of heaven have given thee kingdom, a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fowls of heaven hath he given into thine hand and made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So this is Babylon, the head of gold, which is the third head of the seven heads of the beast or dragon system. After thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee and another kingdom uh, of brass, which shall rule over all the earth. This, this kingdom inferior to them, he, he'll tell it here in a little while, it's silver. It's not quite as um, uh, great of, of uh, a metal as gold. And that was uh, Medo-Persia. And then the third kingdom of brass was uh, uh, B, uh, Greece. Uh, from from that time. So the first one was Egypt, second one is Assyria. Now he's talking, showing Babylon, the head, the head of gold. That's the that's the third dr dragon head, dragon power over the earth. And then Medo, -Per uh, Medo Persia is silver. That's this. That's the um, what would that be? The fourth kingdom. Then Egypt is the fifth kingdom, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, which that's the sixth head of the beast. That's wrong. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces, subdueth all things as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, Part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest that iron mixes with miry clay. And the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back up here to my note. Okay, so I can put this note on our um, WhatsApp group page, if all would like. Everyone that has this Bible program can make your own note of it. Number one, the head of gold, Babylon, the third head. It needs to be a T line, that doesn't it? E, that's e, Egypt and Assyria already passed dragon heads. They were already passed. So it starts out with Babylon, the third head of the dragon. Number two, the beast and his arms, the breast and his arms uh, are silver, Medo-Persia, fourth head of the dragon. The belly and his thighs of brass equals Greece, the fifth head of the dragon. 
legs and iron equals Rome, both pagan and papal, sixth head. Now there's where I've made an adjustment. Brother Leniger saw it this way also, and I believe he was right on it, that these, these legs, just like there was two parts to meet a Persian, they were the arms of silver, but it was all the same dragon. There was two, there was two nations there that had a divided rulership, but it was all just one dragon power called Medo-Persian, the Medo-Persian rule or the dragon of the Medo-Persians. There was two parts, the arms. It's amazing, isn't it, that God uses a man's image and shows all of this, and it absolutely, the body depicts it, the head of gold, the two arms of silver, Medo Persia, then the, uh, the belly and thighs of brass, Greece is the fifth head, and then the legs of iron. See, both legs are iron. It's the same kingdom. It's Rome was uh, the the Caesar, the Caesars of Rome was when Jesus came to the earth, it was already a dragon power in the earth. It ruled the whole world. But when Constantine accepted Christianity and he put the Pope in as the head of the church, it was still Rome ruling the world. It's still just one of the two parts of the iron legs. <clears throat> in the past, we made you know, we made part of that uh, pagan Rome is the sixth head, and then we made seventh head papal Rome. But I don't, that doesn't fit. I'll show you here in a little while why it don't fit. Uh, <clears throat> number one, they're both, they're both iron. It's all one substance, just like Medo-Persia was all silver. And then the feet, uh, let me go back here. The legs of iron equals Rome, both pagan and papal, the sixth head. And then five, the U.S. making Rome, which is iron, and Protestantism, which is clay, the image of the beast, which is the seventh and eighth head. The, the seventh head is the feet. That's, that's America. And, and, of course, we use that in, in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations. I've been over it many times with you. I'll, I'll show it again here in a minute. Um, America being the, the, the beast that rose up out of the earth and had two horn, horns like a lamb, but it spake as a dragon and had all the power of the dragon before it, which was Rome. But when it gets down into the feet members, that, that clay is America. It's a weak, democracy is a weak government for man. There's so many loopholes in it. You and I are seeing that today, that America, God caused America to become the greatest nation in the Gentile world. <clears throat> However, you're seeing there's so many loopholes in democracy that uh, they're, you know, that democracy, our forefathers, uh, you know, actually the pilgrims that came over uh, in 1620 and landed on Plymouth Rock and set up uh, different areas. <clears throat> Uh, in the United States before they became um, states. Those states started out like, uh, like Pennsylvania. William Penn is, was the man that established Pennsylvania. That's why it's called Pennsylvania. Every one of those states, uh, and I believe he was, I believe he was, if I'm not mistaken, he was Baptist and all of Pennsylvania was Baptist. That was a Baptist area. Every one of those areas were a different um, Protestant group. 
Presbyterians. I think Presbyterians were started in Philadelphia. Uh, I, I'll, I'll get you, you know, more information on that um, here in a little bit in the in the future. But um, it this country was established on as a Protestant country, and uh, finally uh, they established in New Jersey. They they finally tried having all of these different Protestant movement uh, movements and leaders go into one area, which was Jersey, New Jersey, and <clears throat> seeing if they could get along together. And so America was it started out, matter of fact, it was in their constitution of every one of these states that Christianity was the religion of the state. It, it, that was part of the constitution of those states in the beginning. And uh, they finally changed it to where God, a belief in God was, was the religion of the country. But uh, it started out very much as a Protestant group. Well, uh, democracy, there's been, there's so many loopholes in democracy that they're changing you know, the laws of democracy, and they'll finally change the um, amendment of separation and state of the Constitution. They'll finally, you know, they're already making uh, uh, constitutional adjustments to be able to control the church uh, world more in the, in the United States. Anyway, the United States is the wrong part of the feet, and but clay is still, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Rome is the iron part and clay is the Protestant part. Uh, and that's the seventh and eighth head. In the feet, the United States only rules for a short period of time and, uh, uh, and it'll make an image to the beast, which, the beast, the Pope of Rome will become the eighth head. Then the toes of part iron and part clay are the 10 kings that are talked about in the 17th chapter of the book of Revelations. Let me read a little further here. <clears throat> uh, we'll start here in 35. Then were the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer, summer threshing floors. I'm reading this because if you, I want you to just notice that the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, yeah, broke, he's going backwards with it now, the way he gave it out. Uh, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. The stone that smoked them became uh smoke the image became a great mountain filled the whole earth. This is the dream. And we'll tell the interpretation thereof of the king. Thou, O king, uh, king of kings, for the Lord have given thee kingdom, power, and strength. I read this a minute ago, but I wanted just to go over it again uh, quickly. And wheresoever the king of the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fires of heaven, fowls, of the heaven hath he given into thine hand and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art his, the head of gold, this head of gold. And after thee arise another kingdom, another uh, inferior kingdom, and the third kingdom of brass, which shall rule over the earth. The fourth kingdom be strong as iron. Uh, verse 41, whereas thou sawest feet and toes of a potter's clay, a potter and iron, the kingdom shall be divided but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron for as much as thou sawest iron mixed with clay. Uh, it's just showing that the Catholicism here, Rome, when it becomes the eighth head, it's going to be the strength of the feet members of the iron and clay. And the toes of the feet were part iron, part clay, so that the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. That's because the 10 kings 
It's still going to be iron and clay, but that represents the 10 kings of the East. That will be the final powers in the end of the Gentile world that will destroy the eighth head, which is the image of the beast, which is Rome. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, thou shalt mingle themselves with the seed of man. They'll not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. That in other words, Protestantism and Catholicism will never really become one. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That's the body of Christ. For as for as much as thou sawest the stone was cut out of a mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, brass, clay, silver, and gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof, sure. And the, and the king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation, that's a sacrifice, and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, of a truth it is that your God is God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole world Providence, province of Babylon, and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel requested of the king that he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel set it in the gate of the king. So this second chapter here, it gives a it gives a revealing just as in Again, belt uh, here in, let's give you this, uh, in, in Daniel 7, I'm not going to go over all that, but I'm just going to show you that in Daniel 7, Belshazzar was the king of Babylon. Uh, during that time, Daniel had a dream, and what he saw was four beasts. And it, it's the same thing, God revealing only with a different allegory or picture. It came up out of the sea, which is the world, diverse from one another. The first one was a lion here in verse four, which was Babylon. The second one was a bear, which was me to Persia. The fifth one, uh, wait a minute, not the fifth one. The, the next one was uh, Medo-Persia, then a leopard, Greece. See, and it, it's showing here uh, beast, four great beasts that came up out of the world instead of the man's image, but it's showing the same thing. And then there's a little horn. In eighth verse, I considered the horns, um, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. You know, the beast had seven heads and ten horns, and the ten horns were the provinces of Rome at the time uh, it's revealed in the book of, in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations. Uh, but here the little horn is, is the papacy. It's, and uh, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, this horn were eyes like in the eyes of man and great things. Um, I, I'm just bringing this up to show that it, it, it show, God reveals this again. Um, let me see. Okay, my scripture, I was wrong. It was not the sixth chapter. Amos 3, 7 is that scripture where it says God doeth nothing, but first he shows it to his prophets. Thank you, Brother Painter. Uh, so 
Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd bring this up, this little horn. I could, I, you know, I've shown y'all before. It plucks up three horns, which was three of the provinces of Rome before the Pope could gain control of all of the world. He had to, he had to destroy three provinces of Rome because they would not accept him as the head of the church and they wouldn't accept his doctrine of the Trinity because they were Arians. They believed in Arianism. They believed in two in the Godhead and they would not change from it. And it took him from AD 325 until 538 to pluck up them provinces and actually gain control over Rome. Okay, so now let's go to Revelations, the 17th chapter, because I want to tie this in with um, the second chapter of Daniel, where God showed Nebuchadnezzar that after, after Babylon, that it would be destroyed by the Medo-Persians. After the Medo-Persian, it would be destroyed, destroyed by Greece. After them, it would be destroyed by Rome. And after that, there would be a, there would be the iron and clay kingdom, which would be the United States of America that's going to join up with Rome. Um, and uh, <clears throat> then the 10 toes, which are the 10 kings, <clears throat> the last power in the Gentile world. So, um, Maybe before we start here in the 17th chapter of the book of Revelations, maybe maybe I should just give a quick explanations in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations <clears throat> concerning America. Because there's some of you on here that probably never heard of this. So I don't want nobody going away saying, Brother Smith lost his mind. He's changed on, you know, he believes this, but they don't know why I believe it. So anyway, verse 11 says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Again, the first thing I want you to see is in Revelation 13, John said, I stood up on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, where did that beast come from? It rose up out of the sea. That's the world, okay? Remember those animals in Daniel 7? The beast which I saw was like a leopard. So this Rome that he saw come up out of the sea, having seven heads and 10 horns. In other words, it's part of this dragon system that has all this leadership to it. And now he's talking about Rome. And, and But it was like a leopard, which was Greece that was before it. And his feet was the feet of a bear. That was Medo-Persia, which was before Greece. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion, which was Babylon, which was before Medo-Persia. And the dragon, that was Rome, that was Constantine, the Caesar of Rome, gave him his power. He's giving the Pope power here and his seat and great authority. And he said, I saw one of his heads that were wounded unto death and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. That what was wounded there is talked about there in Daniel 7, three, uh, the little, the little, here's this little horn. See, Constantine gives the Pope power and his seat and great authority. But his, his, one of the heads were wounded unto death. That was when those three provinces of Rome would not accept the Pope, Pope in 325. And it was 538 before his deadly wound could be healed after he destroyed those pre provinces. And then all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast. That's Rome, the Pope of Rome, saying, who is like unto the beast, and he's able to make war with him. 
and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy, and power was given unto him for 42 months. That's 42 months is 1260 days, and prophetically a day for a year is 1260 years, and that's how long the Pope ruled the world from 538 until 1798 when Napoleon put him in prison. So now, but in verse 11, John says, I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. I want you to see that this beast did not come up out of the sea like the seven horned beast he sees. He sees all this come up out of the world. But here he sees another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. And this is I'm, the earth in the book of Revelations and prophecy. The sea represents the world and the earth represents religion. America did not evolve out of, out of Medo, Babylon, Medo, Medo Persia, Greece, or Rome. It didn't evolve out of that, out of the world. These are all worldly dragon powers. United States was a religious worldly power. It came up out of the earth, not the sea, and it had two horns like a lamb. That horns are powers. That civil and, reli and religious powers. United States was built on a righteous civil power formed after the Bible, and it gave separation of church and state so that the civil power wouldn't inter interfere with the church. It, it because they did that because uh, our forefathers fled from the Eastern world to America for freedom of religion to get away from the dictatorship of Roman Catholicism. And there, civil power and religious power were conjoined and it dictated to the people. And they set this up in our constitution as separation of church and state so that there would not be any dictatorial power or of civil power to interfere with the church. Our forefathers did that. They wanted to get away from civil powers having authority over the church. They knew, however, there needed to be a civil power to maintain law you know, to keep down wickedness and wicked rules. So there was righteous law set up in America, but there are many of them being changed today. And so uh, Catholicism is becoming more and more corrupt because of our political leaders in America getting so far away from God and becoming so liberal in their thinking. I mentioned the other day where I read that someone said, Do, if we all got back to God, would that help the condition of America and the world? And the first person that answered that question that was put out on the internet was a man that said, Finland and France, have always got along good without religion ruling it. And so will America. When I read that, I thought this guy knows nothing about the history of the world or the fact that God has been in control and nations that don't aren't connected to God, God's already turned them into hell, a hellish condition where God's just using those nations, but they'll never be a part of this stone that's an everlasting kingdom that will rule, I mean, that will exist forever and ever. Anyway, these two horns like a lamb, that was civil and religious powers in America that was set up. Our constitution was ruled by the word of God and the faith that our forefathers had in God. And he spake as a dragon. So Eventually, America is going to speak as a dragon, even though it started out from religion and two horns like a lamb, Christ-like. They, they were trying their best to do everything according to the word of God 
and Christianity uh, led by the Son of God. Verse 12 said, and he, this dragon, is finally going to speak as a dragon, exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And he causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So here uh, he, he goes into it in the 17th chapter a little bit better that, that the United States will make uh, an image, I mean, makes the image of the beast here, but it will operate as a dragon power for a short period of time until it brings the Pope in and he will become the eighth head. And then we'll talk about the 10 Kings here in a minute. And he doeth great wonders, so he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth, the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on there, they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. America is going to become a dragon power a, over the whole world. It's almost there now. Um, Brother Lenegrall said he always said this. He said, here's how you'll know that America has become a dragon power. When it taxes the whole world, brings them under tax, because that's what all the dragon powers before it did. And it showed how Rome, Rome taxed the world, taxed Israel and everybody in the world. And he said, when, when they get that power that they can tax the whole world, you'll know that they've got world power. And I have mentioned how that Donald Trump, our last president before Biden, did put it before the UN that he was going to start charging the UN, United Nations for the military policing of the world, that they were going to have to divvy up and help pay for some of this military policing that America was doing. He put that before them. It didn't get done, but it just shows that it's in the working. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be the next power, the next uh, president of the United States. It's going to be interesting to see what God, how God's going to carry out this, this great prophecy. Um, and he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, bond and free, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. The right hands of the ministry, many ministers in Babylon and I believe also in the body will join the beast. They don't really have a true, deep vision and understanding of the body. They will, they will forsake the body, just like many did in the early church are in their foreheads. And that, of course, is in your thinking. God's going to mark the people of God. He'll mark the ministry in their right hand. The ministry will be marked with the doctrines uh, of, the, of the beast, uh, the image of the beast, and the people will be marked as well in their foreheads. Of course, it'll be in foreheads of the ministry too. And that no man might by ourselves say that had the mark are the name of the beast or the number of the name. So here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of man. The number, his number is 600, three score and six. A score is 20, so three times 20 is 60. 300, 600, I mean, 360 and six. So 666 is the number. Well, I've always used it this way, that the body of the beast, see, there won't be but two bodies in the end of this Gentile world, the body of Christ and the body of the beast. Everyone will, will have to take the mark if they're not in the body. So you're either going to be in the body of Christ or the body of the beast, and the body of both of them, the, it, the body of Christ is a body of people that makes up the whole body or the church. The 
soul of it or the mind of it is the teachings of Jesus Christ and the New Testament church that's, that will have been restored. And the spirit of it will be the spirit of Christ. There's just one body. There's just one um, uh, there's just one body, there's just one faith, and there's just one spirit, Paul said in, in Ephesians 4. That faith is the mindset or the teachings that's in the mind of the people. That's our four. That's how God's name is going to be written in our foreheads, and we'll all have the spirit of Christ if we've got the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was in also in Christ Jesus. So the body of the beast is the body of it is everyone that belongs to that system. The soul of it is the faith or teachings of that false doctrine that they've been marked with in their foreheads, in their thinking. And therefore, they'll have a spirit that won't be the spirit of Christ, but it'll be the spirit of the beast system, which is established by the by. Uh, the human is, is teaching in humanism of, of false doctrine or the beast system. So you won't be able to buy or sell. They'll, they'll have it set up where you can't have church legally unless you belong to the beast. And so uh, you won't, Jesus said, buy me gold tried in the fire. In other words, buy the word of God and be be tested to know that for sure you've been established in gold, which is the wisdom of God. Uh, but here you won't be able to buy that. It'll be against the law. You'll have to, we'll have to do like they did in the early church. We'll have to have church probably house to house. People, uh, it'll be a hidden gospel. Of course, they'll know, they'll try to stamp it out. They'll put people in jail and they'll tell them what all will take place. But that's going to happen in the end of this world. Now let's go to Revelation 17 and finish our connecting that with uh, Daniel 2. Okay, so Daniel 17. Now here he's he is he's went through showing what's going to happen in the 13th chapter, a setting up of the image of the beast, the 14th chapters, the harvest and the end of the world. It's going to take place during that time, the last prophetical hour. I've said many times that from the 11th chapter through the 22nd chapter, the book of Revelations is all in the last prophetical hour. The first 11 chapters takes place from the falling away of the early church until the end of the Gentile world and in the last prophetical hour, how important it is, it takes up half of the book of Revelations of what God reveals to us. So that's how important this last prophetical hour is. Uh, but when he gets, he goes through the 15th and 16th chapter showing the end of the harvest of that world with the seven vials poured out. But here in the 17th chapter, he goes back and gives more detail on the harlot system. Okay, so let's read a little bit about it here. Uh, Revelation 17, 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I'll show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman set upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, maybe having seven heads and 10, 10 horns. Here he's down in the last prophetical hour and he's showing the judgment of this harlot system and, and, uh, he shows in the wilderness what happened here. This woman that had seven heads and 10 horns. This is the woman that rode the beast. And the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet color, and decked with gold, precious stones, and pearls, having golden cup in her hand full of abominations 
and filthiness of her fornication. These things, which are gold and precious stones and pearls, those are things of God that Babylon has had, but they've committed abominations and fornication against Christ with all of that. And out upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Notice she's the mother of harlots. So those harlot systems actually turn into Protestant. That she produced that. That woman, out of that woman came all of these organizations of Christianity that formed their own system, became a man system. They will join up with that system before it's over with, except for those people that come out of her, my people, that God calls out in the 18th chapter, calls out of Babylon into the body of Christ. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The angel said unto me, wherefore didst thou marvel? I'll tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carried her, which hath seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Look, this note here. Here, was and is not refers to the fall of Catholicism in 1798. It was and ruled as a part of the sixth head of the dragon from 538 until 1798. However, it comes back into power as the eighth head, image of the beast. Yet is. That's the yet is. Okay. Um, when it person and dwelleth on the earth. And they that dwell on earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Let's see what I got here on perdition. Oh, the man of sin revealed from 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Paul prophesied that this man would be revealed. He was revealed uh, when he became that the head of the church in Rome, the sixth head, but he'll be fully revealed again as the image of the beast. He was the beast that was, and then he was not because he was uh, destroyed. It was stripped of its power without, without world dragon power by Napoleon yet reigned regained its power in the image of the beast and it now it is now the eight being of the seven and so it yet is okay verse nine and here is the mind which hath wisdom seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman set it so here let's tie this into daniel two and there are seven kings five are fallen okay that's egypt Seven kings, five are fallen, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece, okay? Those were fallen. Now, one is Rome, the sixth head, Daniel 2. It had two egg, legs of iron. One is not yet come. Seven, the United States continues a short space after the making of the image of the beast. Let's look right here. Verse 11, the beast that was and is not, he, well, let me go back to 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen. One is, the other is not yet come. When he cometh, he must continue a short space. That's America. U.S. is a short-lived as a dragon, which builds the image to the beast and causes the Pope, Rome, to become the eighth head again. Uh, the eighth head, again, become a head of the dragon. So United States won't stay a dragon power very long. Brother Keith's getting this, isn't he? 
And so, <laughs> so uh, for a short space, America is is uh, uh, going to become a dragon and have all the power of the beast before it. But when it makes an image to the beast, when it says we need, and look, when America becomes a dragon power, it's going to see that it cannot rule this world without, without controlling religion. And they will choose the, the Pope of Rome to become the head of religion. Listen to your to the media today when you listen to the news the only rigid religion that they really give reference to with any honor is the catholic church you know they've been talking about pelosi here lately in fact because she was wasn't on board with removing of of uh, abor abortion rights with uh what's the name of it roe versus wade the the the, uh, the Supreme Court cut, cut that down after 50 years of it being a law that was removed anyway. So, but she was she finally went to the Vatican and the Pope gave her communion. Anyway, so uh, verse 11: the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. And the 10 horns, now we're getting down into the toes. See, we've already talked about the head of gold in Daniel. Uh, it's one of these five that had fallen. The head of gold, the arms and breast of silver, meat of Persia, the, the uh, uh, breast and, and thighs, which was Greece, and then the legs of iron uh, are is is pagan and papal Rome, uh, which we explained in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations. But it was and is not. It finally ceased, but now it's going to be again. Uh, verse 11, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. There's Rome coming back in, is the eighth, eighth head and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. And the 10 horns which thou sawest are 10 kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receiveth power as kings one hour with the beast. Well, uh, when, when, the, when the Pope rules over the whole world for this last prophetical hour, once the image of the beast is set up, these 10 kings, and we don't really yet know exactly, I don't believe this is 10 literal, literal the number of 10 literally, but it may be. We're just going to have to wait and see what God does when he reveals them. Right now, I'm looking at it as being the United Nations. 10 is the number in the Bible of, of judgment. And when America goes down, America will fall. When God, uh, it's shown in the sixth and eleventh chapter of the book of Revelations that there's going to be, when the church is restored, there's going to be an earthquake. Uh, the body used to teach that that was World War II, but there wasn't anything significant enough for it to be World War II. Plus, it happens at the time when the church is restored according to Revelations 6 and 11. So I, I'm saying it is the fall of America. God's going to judge this nation. It will go down as a dragon. It's not going to be destroyed. It just will be destroyed as a dragon power that rules the world once the Pope becomes. But I do believe America will be judged. and It'll never rise again. Um, and there may, there won't, I don't think there'll be any war that brings America down until Armageddon. Um, uh, but it, it could be, 
it could be. There could be some devastation in America where some of the um, some of the military bases, some of the main cities like New York, Los Angeles, coastal cities that are powerful in America, those cities may be uh, militarily attacked. Uh, you know, in 911, that was a very small thing, but it did show that America was vulnerable from within. And it did affect our accounting systems. It did affect uh, our financial systems. And, uh, it, you know, God could very easily, uh, and that may be what happens for God to bring forth a, a resurrection in the restored church. God's going to have to do away with uh, systems of records. You know, so God can easily have our record systems, even in high tech computer. God can God can destroy every bit of that. He can easily have all that hacked and destroyed. I don't know how it will work, but I just know that God's going to have ten kings in this last prophetical hour. And let's read what it says about them. Verse thirteen here says, "These have one mind." and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. But watch what happens. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he's Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Now look. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these are the same as the ten toes, these shall hate the whore and make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest in that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So look back up here in verse 13. Here the ten kings will give their power to the beast. But then in verse 16, they'll hate the whore and destroy her with fire, judgment. God uses others many times to deliver his judgment. See Revelation 16 right here and the 10 kings. So here in the 13th verse, they're going to give their power. So I said, I thought it very possibly could be the United Nations. When America falls, I think the United Nations will, will begin to try to bring stabilization to the world. The United Nations, they'll try to stabilize things after the fall of America. And uh, and, and that they will try to bring judgment over the world or our law or stabilization with their legalistic ways to try to stabilize things. And, uh, and I think the United Nations, by the way, is majority is Arab nations in majority. And they are uh, worshipers of Mohammedism, and they do not agree with Christianity at all. And that's why I think God will use them because they, you know, Mohammedism, uh, it's deceptive in a lot of ways. It makes it sound like that they're, you know, wanting to have peace with Christians. But if you go to study the Korah, uh, is that, what's the name of that? There, yeah, the Quran. If, if they, um, if you study that and study the history of Mohammedism, you'll see that they've tried to stamp out Christianity uh, ever since their beginning. And, 
and and that Allah and Muhammadism become the the God of this world and the the faith of this world. And so, but they by in deceit will they will work with the beast because they ain't gonna be able to do nothing about it. It's gonna be too strong. The Pope of Rome, when he becomes the eighth head that of the dragon that will rule the worlds in that last prophetical hour. But then God's put it in their mind uh, and the 10 horns, verse 16, that thou sawest upon the beast shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate, naked, and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. In other words, they will turn on her in the end, which that should be what brings about Armageddon. That's going to destroy this world. And it very possibly is going to be nuclear power. If nuclear power ever used by all these nations, for the most part, it won't destroy the whole world because the uh, the Jews that come into the body of Christ, when God grafts them back in and they receive this mantle of this restored church, that Jewish ministry with the help of the bride or the, I should say, the help of the man-child group that's going to carry uh, that Jewish ministry down through the thousand years and finally bring an end to sin in the world. God's put it in their hearts, see, to fulfill his will. First, to agree with the beast and to agree and give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God will be fulfilled. And that's when they will turn on her and devour her and destroy her. So those 10 kings are going to play a great part before this is over with. So uh, that pretty well uh, covers today's Bible study, but I hope that I, I hope that I've been able to present this to where, because this is a established teaching in the body. The only adjustments I've made is America, the United States. And I will, I will go back to the sixth chapter right quick of the book of Revelations, just to show uh, that this is the sixth seal. And that's where we're in the sixth seal right now, uh, right here. Uh, in the 12th verse, and I beheld, and when he opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. This is when America makes an image to the beast, even as the fig tree casteth their untimely figs when she's shaken by a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, and it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and great men, and rich men, and chief captains, and mighty men, never bond men, never free men, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Those rocks, those mountains are, uh, those are systems of Christianity, organizations. Uh, that that is you know when seven men seven women take a hold of one man uh, saying let us eat our own bread let us drink our own uh, let us wear our own apparel let us keep our our organizations but let's all join together that's what you're going to see when the image of the beast is set up but God's judgment's going to come fall on us and hide us. In other words, when the, the it's called in the 17th verse for the great day of his wrath has come and who will be able to stand when the church is restored, even though America will, will go down this great shaking, this earthquake that's going to take place. At the same time, God's going to have a church that's going to have the power of the early church, his ministry that will bring judgment on this world. So it's going to be a rocky time, a rocky period, just like the early church was 
but it's going to be a powerful time for the people of God that God will sustain them and protect them, even though there will be great persecution during that time. That's here in the sixth seal, because see, in the seventh seal, it continues and shows that God's going to, he will not let the four winds destroy, he won't let them hurt the earth, neither the sea or the trees, until God, until God makes up his bride, until he finishes sealing his servants in their forehead. So that's going to take place. That's in the sixth seal there, which includes the restoration of the church. Then I'll just quickly mention here in Revelations 11 that um, mm, there it is. Okay. Right here in the 12th chapter, uh, after three days and a half, that's 1260 years of the life of God entered into them. They stood up. These are the two witnesses. The Old and New Testament in the restored church are in the Reformation period. God has them. They, they, these, these two witnesses lay dead in the streets, but after 1260 years, the reformations started and there became an anointing and a power in the Old and New Testament that God began to anoint men that started the reformation. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. That's the restored church. And their enemies beheld them, and the same hour there was a great earthquake. See, in that last prophetical hour that I mentioned in the sixth chapter, there was an earthquake. It's the same earthquake here, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake were slain of men, 7,000 remnant were fighting and gave glory into heaven. The second woe is past. The first woe was was. Mohammedism that came against the Catholic Church. The second woe is the fall of America. That is when they set up the image of the beast, and America, is, a great earthquake is going to take place. It's going to shake this world when America goes down, and the third woe cometh quickly, and that's Armageddon. So uh, before we finish today, I I, I will ask if there's any questions. When you have a teaching like this, nobody wants to ask a question because they, they know it's going to take a while. <laughs> anyway, yes, sir? Uh, it's not a question, but it might be important to note that the Supreme Court right now is comprised of seven justices who are Catholic or were raised Catholic. And that uh, is significant in that in the history of the Supreme Court, there's only been a total of 15 or 16, depending on whether you consider Gorsuch Catholic. In the history of the whole Supreme Court, there's only been 16 Catholic judges. So some people commonly refer to the court right now as a Catholic court. And that, so that's, it falls in line with your teaching here. Yeah, and it 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 remains to be seen what is going to take place if if the democratic government's going to try to do anything to pad the the court and add more justices than nine uh, or not before he's out of office. Of course, it could be. I don't know if they could change that. I don't know how they could change that if it takes place. It's going to be interesting. There's a lot of things happening right now because we're down in the we're getting down into the feet members of this, of iron and clay. We're not there yet, but we're getting close. We're, we definitely, America is definitely a Protestant nation that is clay, but it hasn't become empowered yet uh, that it's going to be a part of the feet members of Daniel too. But it's, but, but it's going to happen fairly soon, I think, because I think it's a, it's, I think it's very important to understand we are in the end 
of the Gentile world. That's why, Sally, I need you in this church. I need your help. I need everybody I can rake up. And, and somebody said at the campground, they said, God, he didn't, you know, the Bible said, uh, no man, Jesus said, no man cometh unto me except my father draw him. Somebody at the campground said, he, God drug you here. He didn't just draw you, he drug you in here. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm asking God drag some of these people back into the kingdom of heaven. We need their help. We need strength. We need uh, the people of God that gets a vision and understand what God's going to do and that he's going to make us a part of this great covenant of a restored church, the bride of Jesus Christ is going to produce a man child that will rule and reign this world for a thousand years. I don't want to sleep during that time. This is too exciting to sleep in it. That wake out of your sleep, Paul said. The time, it's high time. We're, in, we're getting in a time where God is going to wake people out of their sleep and cause them to understand what God's going to do in the end of this world, and he's given us in the body of Christ, an opportunity. Uh, see, Babylon, God hadn't got his people out of Babylon yet. That takes place in one hour. That God's going to call his people out and judge that system. We're kind of like the 120 that God called out first before he established the New Testament church on the day of Pentecost. Then he began to call all of his people out of Judaism and opened up everything to the Gentile world. The body of Christ right now is like, it's like the 120 Jesus gathered together and was getting them ready on the day of Pentecost to call his people out of Judaism. He's going to use us to call his people out of Babylon and gather together all of God's people. Remember what Brother Leninger always said? He said, the Baptist people are a type of John the Baptist. They'll never join this beast system when it's set up. John will get his head cut off. The Baptist people will get their organizational head cut off because they will not join the beast system, and all of the disciples of John will come to the disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the Baptist people that'll begin to flock into the body of Jesus Christ. And God will add them and use them in a great way in the end of this world together with the body, the people that are in the body. And that's going to add great strength to the body of Christ as it, as it forms in the last prophetical hour into a restored church that has exactly what the early church had. And so <clears throat> we're living in a very exciting time. It, it, it's, a it's, a, it's a rocky time. You know, in other words, there's so much happening. And, and that's why you saints of God need not to get your mind on the things of this world or be shaken by what's going on in this world but get your mind on the things of God and what God's doing and understanding he's revealing to us everything that he's going to do in the end of this world and giving us a great opportunity to be a part of it. And so some of it sounds, you know, like I always hate to be a prophet. I don't like being a prophet of doom. This, I'm not talking about doom. The world's the ones it's going to, it's in, uh, it's up for doom that's coming, the wrath of God. But the people of God are going to live in the greatest time that God's ever had among his people in the Gentile world that's going to produce everlasting life. I, I, I want to give you all a scripture. This is a little bit out of uh, context for today's study, but I'm going to give it to you anyway because you need it. <laughs> I want to give you, in Romans 7, you remember what I've been talking to you about? The bride of Christ, that we're married to God. 
look in Revelation 7. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she's loose from the law of her husband. So then, while her husband liveth, she be married to another. Uh, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she's free of sin, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. I'm giving you that scripture to show you that Christ could not marry again until he died on the cross. That freed the people under the law to marry Christ on the day of Pentecost and be a part of that covenant relationship of the New Testament church, the bride of Christ that would produce overcomers or the man-child group that would rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And if you become a part of that covenant relationship with Christ, you are married to Christ in covenant relationship in the bride. And that is the just people. It's not everybody, I don't think, that's in the body of Christ. I think it is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. It is the just people of God that are living an upright, faithful relationship with Christ in covenant with him. You can fall out of that, but if you remain in it, God will produce in you an overcoming life, and you'll become a part of the man-child group. Anyway, that just adds to little teaching, little uh, lesson in the past I've been given here recently, but I just wanted you to add that to your repertoire of what I've been given. Anyway, before we get off here today, today let's pray for the Fisher family. Here, I'll stop sharing, get you all back. Uh, uh, pray for the Fishers because they've got, you know, COVID. Brother Ethan uh, Boyd has got COVID, and so no doubt there'll probably be some that are especially family members that that'll cross over to, and then let's pray for those that don't have it, that they don't get it. Uh, but these that have it, let's pray they have a quick, easy uh, time with it and quick recovery. Uh, and then pray for Sister Crafton. I want you to remember Sister Crafton. We want to keep her in prayer. She's doing better, but we want her to keep doing better. Brother Smith? Yes. Um, Al just tested positive for COVID also. Okay, Brother Al. All right. Pray for the Ratliff family because they're probably different ones going to, you know, probably come. When you when one come down in the home with it, it crosses over to others. So let's pray. Uh, they've had their... Uh, They've had their vaccines, and so they're saying that people's had their vaccines, having a lot less time with it. You know, I came home with it from the campground. Probably, I would say probably at least a couple hundred people went home from the campground with COVID. But I don't know of anybody that I don't even know if anybody had to go in the hospital with it or died with it. So this Omicron seems like it's more contagious, but it doesn't seem like it is as deadly of a of a virus is is the original uh, and and I think because people's had vaccines or they've had it before they've developed immunity that's helped so let's pray for everyone that you know that has it then I said sister Crafton brother Bill Daniels brother Gary Wright still needs our prayers he he hasn't been able to be in church until maybe he was in it today. He told me he was thinking he would be able to have be in church today. 
this week. So remember that. Remember the people in Keswick, Canada, Brother Goss, his family, that church. They certainly need our prayers right now. My niece, Bonnie Garza, that has uh, cancer, <clears throat> remember her. She's got, uh, what kind of cancer is that? Pancreatic cancer, yeah. stage four. Yeah, pancreatic cancer. So she's not, you know, if God don't touch her, she's not going to be able to live. So pray for her. Pray for Sister Sally. God will help help me get her. I need I need people like that. She's got this background in her life. I know things happen that that hurt her. She became a victim, but that's past. That's not here today. I'm not going to hurt her. I'm going to try to help her. If I can get her in here beside Brother Paul, I, I don't want to put too much pressure on her. But I, I love that family, and I think God wants them to be a part together with us there's no reason they can't so pray um what else do we need to pray about somebody tell me brother smith want to remember uh sister crow um yeah i think you mentioned brother and sister mcgowan yes um, and then also my father-in-law uh willie denman is not doing well he's having kidney failure ask the lord to help him and then i have a, a friend of mine who's in a bad situation and he needs the Lord's uh, mercy and intervention in his life. All right. Yes, let's remember those needs. All right. If everyone would, we, we're not going to pass the plates today or ask you to give your <laughs> offer today. But I do want to mention to you, I ask you to be praying about uh, a pledge to the, to the missionary work of the Dominican Republic. Um, probably next Sunday, I, I thought about taking it up today, but of course we're not there, but um, we've got so many needs. I've got, a, I'm going to, I'm going to get Brother Painter to post the pictures of, you know, we've got four walls up in Benedito of a new church building. They're cinder block. Everything over there is built cinder block because of hurricanes, but it has no floor yet in it, has no you know, it's got window openings and doors, but no windows or doors. It doesn't have a roof on it either. So we got a lot to do there in Benedicto to get that building. That's about a 40 by 60 foot building. Fuchsia, that church has grown so much that we've had to, and it had probably 125 people in it, but it's grown to a point that we've had to tear out one wall and double the size of the building for the sanctuary, but we don't have a roof on that second part yet. So when it's not raining, they put chairs out there and we've turned the building around where the platform now is facing the new part that's, that doesn't have a roof on it. We did the same thing in the first church. We only had a half a roof on it. And we finally uh, were able to, uh, you know, get a second part on it. But now we've got it uh, opened up. And, and so when it's not raining, they can set chairs out there. When it rains, they've just all got to cram in that original part. So, you know, we need to get a roof on that. Um, Brother Rudy's church in Iguay, we finally got that church roofed and built. It's, it's, it's not finished. It's all just... Um, it's just cinder block, no paint, no nothing inside or out, but it does have, I think it's, I, I, I think it's got some windows. I'm not sure uh, how we've got the doors. I think they're finally getting them in there. But anyway, Brother Rudy hawked his house. He borrowed money against his house and he was paying Here's the way it is in the Dominican Republic. He was paying 2% of the loan per month interest, which the loan was a little less than $10,000. He was paying 15,000 
pesos a month, which is about $270, $280. Just, that's just interest. He wasn't paying a penny on principal. If you own a house over there, if you give $75,000 for it and you finance it over there, your, your payments on it's going to be $1,500 a month on interest. That's how they, that's how much your interest is over there. It's 2% a month of the unpaid balance. So Rudy, he, he was having trouble coming up with 15,000, just pay interest on it. In fact, I paid it for him last month uh, out of the missionary funds. And, uh, but we've, we've had enough money come in from the letter that I sent out. We had, uh, around $12,000 come in. Wichita has given 4,500 pledged and they transferred 4,000 into our missionary account just this past week. They still got another 500. They're going to be adding to it, but that's that, you know, so we're, we've got around eight, 8,000, almost 9,000, no, about eight, $8,500 left of the money that's come in, but that ain't, that ain't, that's not gonna help us that much. We've got, oh, I can't, you know, we've got more building problem that we need to finish. Pajita, we've got uh, to finish getting the title there and there's a little addition to that building that's gotta be added. Uh, that we got to pay on, which is only going to be a couple thousand dollars to finish that and get a clear title on it. And then this church paid $10,000 12 years ago, and so did Wichita to buy a 21, about 10,500 piece, to buy a $21,000 van that's now 12 years old and it's wore out. It was a special $30,000 van that the government helped churches with that was able to buy for $21,000 cash. You know, it holds seven people on those minivans. It holds seven people here in America. They can get about 20 in there. And when you drive on their roads with that many people for 12 years, you know, they wear them out. I've replaced the springs. I've replaced the, the shocks more than once. I've replaced the tires. I don't know how many times. Uh, I've, I've had to keep it up. You know, uh, we've had to do that. God's helped us, but we need a new van. I don't know. I don't know exactly how we're going to do that. God will provide, I'm sure. But I just need help. I need some help. And so I'm asking for pledges. And uh, I know Brother Durham's going to give $1,000, and I'm going to give $1,000 on our pledge. But I need you to be praying and thinking about it. Next week, we'll be asking for pledges and uh, for to help us with, with what's going on over there. I can promise you, don't ever worry that we're going to get more money than we need for missionaries work. It, it's impossible. There's, there's, there's just, it's a poor country. There's so many needs. Uh, you know, I got those new five Haitian churches right now. One of those churches is, is in a building that they're renting off of another group that they can't even, you know, they're, they've outgrown it. They can't even all get in it. And they're wanting me to buy land, help them buy some land, which is only going to cost around $3,000. Big enough piece of property that they can start building them a little building. And, and uh, but I just told them, we're just going to put that on hold of God helps us because we got all these other needs ahead of you. But God's blessing that country in a great way. Just pray that I need God to send us. I think I, I, I'm asking God to send me a millionaire <laughs> that is willing to help with the work in the Dominican Republic. But I know God, he'll provide the proper help as the time comes. And 
he normally keeps us looking to him for help instead of a millionaire. So I'm just kind of joking about what I'm saying, but I'm just putting that out like we need financial help in the Dominican Republic. And if you ever go over there, you won't have any trouble giving to the mission. And this church is very faithful to give to the missionary work. And so uh, I don't know what everybody's thinking about giving. Brother Durham told me his part, and I'm telling you mine. That's what I had in mind too. So we're, you know, we'll, we'll be praying about that if you would. All right, everybody, let's, let's. Brother Smith. Uh-huh. Uh, I've got a toe that's kind of infected. D Dr. Cohen's been working on it, but uh, I don't want to lose the second toe. So. Okay. I think most people know Brother Keith is a, he's diabetic and, you know, you get these diabetic sores. It's hard. Brother Emilio Green's sister, Sister Florence, just had to cut her foot off on her right foot, her whole foot. And so, you know, she's up in her 70s. So um, pray for her too, Sister Florence. I talked to her this week. Her spirits are up good. She says, God knows all about it. I'm trusting the Lord. So, but she, she don't have any money for a prosthesis or anything. So she's going to have to, you know, be in a wheelchair for right now. And hopefully God will provide something more for her in the future. Also, Sister Smith's going to be having surgery week after next on one of her feet, and she's not going to be able to get around on her for a couple of weeks. And then I've ordered one of them little scooters for her to put her knee on that she can get around uh, with. So anyway, pray for her that that surgery goes good and that she has a speedy recovery in it. All right, let's all turn our microphones on and pray together here today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Thank for your you. precious word, Lord, for you, Lord. the things that you reveal. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, touch our people, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Thank the, you, Lord. the Fisher family, these that have oh, COVID, God. Uh, God. Brother God. Ethan, Brother Al, God, God prevent God. these that have been at. Uh, uh, Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Not Thank get this, you, Lord. this disease. And those that have, God, help them to have a speedy recovery. Yes, God. Be very God. ill. That's Sister Craft oh, today. Oh, God. Brother Bill Daniels today. Yes, My niece, Bonnie Thank Garza. You. Oh, God. These that Brother uh, Painter Thank mentioned. You, Thank you, Jesus. Uh, need our prayers today. Oh, God. I'll touch our people. Touch this body. Touch, Brother, touch, Brother Lord, Gary touch. Wright. Oh, yeah. Brother Goss and the church in Cheswick County. This body. Oh, oh, God. Lead us. God. Touch your ministry, Lord. Oh, oh, God. Yes. 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 Touch this ministry. Thank you, God. And it's a great time. We know that you're going to move among your people. We'll give you. Praise Thank you, God. God. Help us and lead us and guide us. Thank you, Jesus. Direct your people, Lord. In Jesus' Thank name you. we pray. Thank hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that's he's trying to get people up right now. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank Praise you, God. Thank you for your goodness, Jesus. Thank all right. You. God bless all of you. I wish I could have. Seen you in person today, but this is the next best thing, I think. So I'm mm -hmm. going to stop the recording. I'll I'll post the recording on um, on Zoom. What's that? Let's, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Stop recording. Okay. <laughs>